This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl. Welcome to Yak Radio, a radio show that's about, well, who knows? It's a different topic every week, but Yak Radio is always full of information to help you and your family get through life. Now, here's your Yak Radio host, Dave Stahl. All right, folks, welcome to Yak Radio with Dave Stahl, FM 96.1 AM 1170, The Answer. Did you plug them in already? No. I, been, I need to open them. Oh, you haven't even opened them? Yeah. <laughs> All right. You all know who that is. What's uh, up, by, San Diego? This is uh, brought to you by San Diego Propane. If you're looking for propane in East County, nobody beats San Diego Propane. Go to sdpropane.com, sd-propane.com. 619-460-1705 or West Escondido Auto and Trans if you're looking for good solid repair AAA ASC certified Napa Auto Care you can't get any better than West Escondido Auto and Trans find a location at westautomotivegroup.com westautomotivegroup.com well I got to tell you, folks, got a very, 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 very special guest in the house. Uh, I've known this guy for quite some time. Uh, he's a world-class author, wrote uh, American Sniper, which uh, is just a, not only is it a riveting book, but it's even a better movie. Scott McEwen, how you doing, Butsky? I'm good, Dave. Thank you for having me on. Good well, to see you. And thank you for coming out. I know, you know, you we could have done this, uh, you know, we could have done this... Uh, uh, let me get this thing stuck in. Ah, we could have done this by the phone, but I always like having people in. I look you dead in the face, and uh, Jared just watched the movie last night because I told him, you know, if, if you're going to come in with us today, you got to watch the movie. Uh, it's a great movie. So tell us a little bit about what was your inspiration for that, just for that book in itself. Well, you know, I met I met Chris. Um, I used to do a lot of pro bono work. I'm a recovering lawyer, um, and, uh, and and uh, and I used to do a lot of pro bono work for the for the military, particularly a lot of Navy SEALs. Uh-huh. And um, as a result of that, I got to know Chris pretty well. And uh, I, you know, would do things for the families when they were gone. Sure, car issues, whatever you name it. Somebody needs to clean it up. I'd go clean it up for the families sure. or, or for the guys. I mean, yeah. the guys, SEALs are known to do maybe get in trouble every now and then. Or at least they used to more than now. A- anyway, uh, um, <laughs> and as a result of that, I met Chris Kyle. In fact, Chris Kyle and I used to drink at Bon Giovanni's on a regular ca- occasion. There's and Bon uh, Giovanni's again. Bon Giovanni. Free there plug. You go. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, the bar scene at the end of the movie where Chris is speaking on the phone and being called by Taya, was from the bar at Bon Giovanni's. No way. Was it really? Absolutely How? from the bar at Bon Giovanni's. Because he would come back, he would come back from deployments and he'd be like, dude, I, I, I just don't want to go home right now. I mean, I'm like, I'm caught between the war and home. Right. And can I stay at your house? And I'd be like, dude, you can stay in my house. I had a guest house in Blossom Valley at the time. I said, you can stay in my house anytime you want, man. You know, you want to decompress, which they really never focused on, which really caused these guys a lot of stress yeah. coming back from war zones. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, because you come from directly from Baghdad, get on a plane, fly 18 hours, come hit the U.S., and then say, oh, hi, honey, I'm home. How are the kids? Yeah, right. It, it, it and don't when, you've been, when you've been outside the wire taking fire for the last six months, dude, it's not, it's not easy to do. No. And, you know, and so these guys needed some decompression time and and uh, I used to do a lot of decompressing with them yeah. and with Chris you know I mean we, we drank a few Coors Lights anyway sure so uh, <laughs> um, and uh, and shot a lot of guns anyway so um, <laughs> um, you know uh, that was kind of it and you know Bon Giovanni's was a big part of that yeah. and it's really the truth that that scene where he talks to Tay and says I'm back was from that bar. That's incredible. I'm going to watch it again <laughs> yep. just to make sure I see Bon Giovanni's bar. Yep. You know, I felt a little bad having not seen the film up to this point, but I'm actually glad because of how fresh it is and being more mature and able to notice these little things. They touched on that really well in the movie. Oh, yeah. And Clint Eastwood did such an amazing job of just touching on so many things just enough, just kissing them enough to put them there if you're looking for them. So I'm really interested to see how you go into stuff like PTSD in the book and well, you know, we we were very straightforward with it. I mean, I I and a lot of people wanted to kind of keep some of that out to make Chris more of a hero, 
And I said, look, dude, this is a true story. This is not you being a hero. This is you being you. And you're one of the toughest men on earth. I mean, like literally the toughest guy I know. Totally. That is not a man you wanted to mess with. And no. uh, I'll guarantee you, you're going to come out. You and 10 other guys are going to come out second. Mm. And uh, But uh, that being said, he, you know, he gone through so much he was troubled well, uh, dude you can't kill you can't shoot you can't be in that much battle and warfare for for 10 years and without, not be troubled oh, I'm, i mean it's it it, it it changes your reality and a lot of people say like well what do you mean it changes your reality and i say well when you go to war like chris and he used to tell me and we put it in the book and we and it got in the movie too you don't see the world the same way. In other words, your your mind gets tuned to war, and when you get tuned to war that much inside war, you must either be in tune with war or you die. That's and, right. And, and and so you your mind, every sound, every thing in, in, that that comes on around you is a threat, is a danger zone, is what it is. And to come back off of that and come back to the real world where you can sit down and watch TV and it's no big deal and this and that, you know, it's very difficult mm-hmm. for. For men to do that, and especially men that have been back to back to back in deployments. And remember something, we were at war for 20 years, yeah. mm-hmm. 20 years straight. I mean, the guys in battlefields in World War II, as bad as that was, and, you know, in D-Day and all these Iwo Jima, I mean, we can go through some hellish, hellish things. Mm-hmm. That was five years. Right. Mm. That was five years. This was 20 years. And how many, how many tours did he do? Chris was on his fourth when he pulled out. Yeah. Four, you know. And, and four forward to deploy now granted i was in korea during 1967 we lost guys in our outfit because of the geneva convention out of my outfit but i only went on one tour mm. and it was very difficult okay one tour mm. that was it not four and not living what chris and the rest of his his buddies had to live through yeah, and this is, you know, when people say, well, I did this and that, and I'm not denigrating any man or woman that has served this country in service, because I'm telling you right now, they deserve all of our credit and they deserve all of our support, but there's warriors and then there's the guys that are outside the wire. And the guys that are outside the wire in some of these wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, I mean outside the wire. I mean, mm-hmm. like you're in a war zone where everything around you can kill you, can bite you, can shoot you, can do whatever That's else. Right. And you know what? You must be tuned into that or you're going to die. I That's mean, and, those, and these guys weren't the tip of the spear in doing that battle. And, and they weren't sitting behind a desk or guarding mm-hmm. a, you know, a, a, a station. Not that that isn't laudable, whatever, somewhere in, you know, in the middle of Baghdad inside the green zone. These guys are the guys that are called upon to go out and get bad guys. All right. Not that this is a commercial, but how do people get your book? You know what? I'm ScottMcEwen.com is my website. So all my stuff is there, but it's on Amazon and it's on, you know, all the bookstore stuff, you know, Barnes and Noble, all that kind of stuff. But I always highly recommend to people that they they go to Amazon. And the only reason being, I'm not an Amazon fan or whatever, you get 30% off and it's free shipping. You know, like, so like, you know, and and at some point in time, you know, it matters, you know, and if it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Go to, go down to a brick brick and mortar and support Barnes and Noble because I I love the fact we still have bookstores that exist and and your small indie bookstores. I totally support them and do signings at them, you know, because they got to support. You you still do signings? Oh, yeah. Oh, sure, right. sure. I do signings all the time. You Give know, I mean, I sign books. No, you don't get you know, one. I got some. I got some new stuff coming out, so we'll see what happens there. Well, yeah, we're going to talk about that. Well, what, now you want a piece of paper? Yeah, no. <laughs> I was going to have him sign it. You yeah. know, I am so glad. <laughs> Wait till you get the book. I got you. And then we'll have him I back on again. Yeah. It took me a while to get him on in the first place, but I knew I could make it happen uh, because you're a true patriot. You may not have carried a rifle, but everybody is a patriot in their own way. And I think the stories that you tell and the stories that, that you convey to the, to the public, I, I think, are just as important as going to war or going in the military. I think it's important that we support. And what I, I think my contribution is, is I'm steadfast in my support for, for people, even people that have troubles while they're back here you know eddie gallagher i supported 100 percent. i mean there's you know the, i've i've supported I, I supported clint lawrence who was up for a murder charge for giving an order in afghanistan to shoot some bad guys approaching their position they tried to they brought him up on murder charges we got him the pardon he deserved yeah. you know we got we got you know it, it, we got ultimately got that thing resolved you know how do those things happen yeah is it because people are not have never been in a war zone and they don't understand the situations these these folks are under you have a lot of people for every soldier in the field people got to understand there's three to five administrators that are back in the back okay so yeah. like for every guy that's 
and that's not even saying seals i'm not talking to no, no, no i'm just talking about army regular army whatever you know yeah. marines whatever for every soldier that's actually out there carrying that gun you've got three to five people behind it that are second guessing what they do right. and that's that's the problem is that it used to be they second guessed it in favor of the soldier and now it's second guessing in favor of keeping their butt in whatever seat they're in and or getting another star on that shoulder <laughs> Jesus. And you know what? And we've got far too many generals and far too many and far too few patents. Without a shadow of a doubt. All right, let's take a quick break. You're listening to Yak Radio with Dave Stahl. Special guest, Scott McEwen, author, uh, works in the movie world, and is a true patriot. Right here on FM 96.1 AM 1170, The Answer. All right, folks, welcome back to Yak Radio, FM 961 AM 1170, The Answer. Segment's brought to you by South Bay Auto House, 310 Trousdale Street in Chula Vista. If you've got a Mercedes-Benz and you're looking for an alternative, that's the place to go. 619-422-6252. And Bumper Doc Santee scratches, dings, and dents. Nobody takes care of your car better than Santee Bumper Doc. Go to SanteeBumperDoc.com. SanteeBumperDoc.com. Talking with Scott McEwen. Got my buddy Jared Basso. Basso. What was your new name? The Jet. The Jet. Jared the Jet. Jared yes. the Jet. Hello, San Diego. And he does Thanks his own show uh, once a month. And uh, I knew he would appreciate uh, Scott. Plus, we all hang out at Bon Giovanni. So. Yeah, we're basically family. So we've you know? all seen what one another. And yeah, and thanks for having me, Dave. And thanks a lot for coming in, Scott. This is great. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Especially so, at this time. Yeah. So what other books have you, how many books have you written in, in this arena? Because I know you write all over. I've got 10 books published, um, uh, of which I have a Sniper Elite series, which is four books, which is currently under option with uh, Warner Brothers. And, okay. and I've got, I've got uh, another series of books called the Camp Valor series which is a young adult series that I wrote for teenager and teenage boys really it, it has some violence but not as much as you might see on a first person shooter game or whatever but uh, no bad language no none of this uh, this uh, liberal fare or anything else mm -hmm. just a good patriotic story and it's done extremely well and absolutely then, and then I've got several other nonfiction books including one called City of Death uh, with uh, Ephraim Matos that uh, let's just say we're in a huge negotiation right now with that with that book as well excellent well i tell you you know I, I hate to admit how old i am but i can't remember if i've read your book or not i know i've seen the movie but i don't know if i have but i am gonna if i and that's i'll get the, you one but see it's great about being old if i did read it i don't remember it it's, it's just as refreshing <laughs> so i can get like, it again like the first time and read it again <laughs> well to get to give you an example uh the movie mark Wahlberg did shooter right okay so i Honest to God, I've seen that movie probably 20, 30 Great times. Movie. Great movie. I can almost do the, do it verbatim. So, and I happened to watch it the other day, and it had, it was a story, and I can't think of the gentleman's name that wrote the book, Tom something, anyway, doesn't uh, make right. And I went, oh, oh, so I got the book and read the book. Now, I don't really like the way this guy writes, to be absolutely honest. He tells two stories side by side. Right. Three pages is his story. Then the next three pages is his story. Then it all comes together at the end. Right. I'm too old for that. Yeah, yeah. It gets confusing. Yeah. But I did enjoy the book, and it was a lot of similarity. So I'm really looking forward to getting your book and reading it. And then I'll probably have you back in again because, like Jared, he hasn't read the book either. So we'll get him a book too. So we'll both read it. Because I always find it more enlightening when you've read the book than you do the interview. I was so lucky too, just as an aside towards the movie, is in that that book was originally when Chris and I did it, our first choice was always Clint Eastwood to direct it. And that's why I hired. I went with the producer that we did go with, uh, Mad Chance, with uh, in in Los Angeles because he had done Space Cowboys with Clint Eastwood, mm -hmm. and the guy was very honest, which is a very rarity in, in that town. You know, and he said, uh, you know, look, I won't guarantee you Clint's going to do this, but I'll guarantee you he's going to read it, and he'll say, you know, and everything else. And I said, good, you know. And then Steven Spielberg picked it up and said, I want to direct this movie, and saw the say, I, I'd chosen Jason Hall had written the script, and Jason, I, I actually chose Jason over some other guys that had a bigger name, but I thought Jason had the, the, the mission and, and, and the vision. Anyway, long story short, Spielberg picked it up, and I was like, oh, man, you know, <laughs> Spielberg's kind of a gun grabber. You know, I don't know, if, yeah. even as big as he is, I don't know if that's the right thing, you know, whatever else, and he dropped it like three weeks later, and I get that phone call from Clint Eastwood. 
Scott, that's, I said, I know who this is. You don't even have to say who this is. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that's one of your feathers in your cap? Yeah, dude, I'm telling you, you get that phone call from Clint Eastwood, you're like, yep. uh, uh, that's a that's a pretty important phone call. It's a call from Dave. You know exactly uh, uh, who it is. Best uh, yeah, yeah, almost right. almost yeah, as important. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Well, and it's one of those kind of phone calls, you don't even know if it's if it's really him. You, you know, you almost, no, his voice is so recognizable. Yeah, that's true. It's like he's like, hey, Scott, I just called. I call. I got your number from Andrew, you know, at, at Mad Chance. I like. Clint, thank you for calling. Yeah. Are, you, are you going to direct it? He said yes. Oh my God! And, and awesome. it was such, it was such a. Did you see it as a suspenseful? Absolutely, from everything. the beginning to the end. So much. It from had everything in it. Yeah, absolutely. So, what do you got coming out? You know, we got another book coming out in the Sniper Elite series uh, with Simon and Schuster. Um, they're they're back. You know, like. Uh, People like me, let's just say our favor was lost during the dark days of, let's just say, the left kind of taking over the publishing world in sure. New York. And oh, lo and behold, I think they see that there maybe there's a tidal wave coming on the other side you and that, that conservative American values may be back in the fore. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we got that coming out. And then I'm still going to finish my uh, Second Amendment book one of these days. There just seems to be so much stuff going on <laughs> that it never never seems to end. It's like the story that, that, that evolves every day. And the Supreme Court takes another mm -hmm. case up. And just when I think it's done, it's not done. And no. the Supreme Court cases have been huge, you know. Massive, you massive. Know, yeah. Well, you know, and the, and the thing of it is, and I am an avid reader. But I like books. I like to, you know, people say, well, you, can you get it on Kindle? Mm. Who cares? I'm the same way. I want to sit down, you know, like Jared will say, hey, Dave, you want to go to lunch? Yeah, if I'm in the middle of a really good book, <laughs> chances are no. Yeah. <laughs> because that's what I do. Everywhere I go, mm. I'm known all around East County as the guy with the book, mm -hmm. you know, because that's it's true. Because I, I dive into the book, and if it's well written, you know, then I'm gone. I am gone for a good hour, hour I'm, and a I'm half. I'm the same way, man. I'll go back. Thomas Paine, 1776. Yeah. You know, a crisis in America. I picked that up and read that poem, and it brings me a lot of. Brings uh, you right just, back. It just brings me right back to that attitude that this country's worth dying for, and it's worth it's worth stepping up and 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 fighting for. And, yeah. And by gosh, we're about there again. Yeah. I got a, a question with uh, your Benghazi book that I saw you had. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, the Benghazi book was written. Uh, I wrote that with a, another guy, uh, it, 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 that uh, really good writer. Um, and you know, I had some friends. Ty Woods was a friend of mine, and uh, I was extremely upset when Ty was killed in Benghazi. And uh, and so I did a lot of deep diving and made a lot of phone calls and found out what a mess that really was and how badly Hillary and Obama had really done on that, mm -hmm. causing what I believe to be, or at least contributing to the death of my friends and others that were involved in that incident there. There was things that could have been done and were not done. Sure. And, uh, you know, I just kind of dove into it. And it's kind of funny because I spoke to a pilot and he flies out of Sigonella. And uh, anyway, he gave me the scenario on how they could have got those fast movers over the top of Benghazi almost immediately with a hot pit stop in like Sicily, you know, to, to refuel the planes and be on, sure. on top of this well within the time frame that these guys needed help. Mm -hmm. And uh, they chose not to do it because they wanted to say that this was a Arab Spring. It was all a success and, yep. you know, that everything was great after they killed Gaddafi and, you know, yep. everything else, you know. And, and so they did nothing. And as a result of that, we didn't get any fast movers or any air support whatsoever. And these guys had to fight it out for 13 hours and, you know. It, the rest is history, and we've lost those men, but I felt like something needed to be said. And so I wrote that scene. I wrote that potential rescue scene, and they put it in the movie. I, awesome. got the, I gave them permission to put it in the movie. Sure. Because I said, look, dude, you can do that. No problem. Do you go into any of the reason that they did go in after Qaddafi and some of those side stories? Or is you know, it all focused I, it, on look, Benghazi? It was all part of this whole vision that Obama had that he was going to clean up the whole Middle East and it was all going to be a la-la fairyland and the Arab Spring and all their crap that they thought they were going to do. Right. And they had no idea. Once you get rid of one despot in the Middle East, another takes his place or it becomes complete chaos. Benghazi now, they have slaves being sold in the street. It is a fifth world country akin to what it was in the, in, in, in the literally before the Western world because yeah. they literally have slaves being sold in wow. the street in Benghazi right now. And you never hear a word. Never, hear, never word. hear a word. Right, it's all gone. And That's the state of chaos. And yeah. if you really look at it ever since, what, World War II, we've never won a war since. Yeah. No, they don't Good have the point. resolve to do it. They don't no, have the they really don't. 
you know, and you know, and sometimes the best thing you can do, and you know, like as much as I feel for the situation that's going on with the Arabs and the Israelis right now in in in, in the Strip, Netanyahu is right. You either win or you don't win, and that's the way it is. And mm-hmm. you know, and he knows he's been through enough in history, and he doesn't care anymore. I mean, yeah. the man, the man's gone too far, right. you know, in history to 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 care what the left wants to th- make him think. He needs to make sure that a message is sent. You do this to my people, I will do this to your people. That's exactly right. I totally one hundred percent. And I think one of the best comments ever made by Donald Trump was when he showed a photo of the guy's house and he goes what's that he says you touch one hair on any of our he- our americans heads here's a picture of your house look at the taliban yeah he told him he told the taliban on our withdrawal from afghanistan he said we're going to withdraw whatever and then joe takes over and all these people get killed and all this mess happens when everything else during the time between when he said we are going to leave and they did an agreement to say we're going to leave within this period of time in afghanistan we've been there for 20 years mm-hmm. we're not going to change that mess and they were right for doing it i think i agree and then then look what happens when Joe takes over. The place becomes complete chaos. Right. Because he has no he has no strength. Exactly. You know, I have nothing personally against the man. He should have never been in the position he was in. He doesn't if you look at his history of being in, in politics, he never made the right foreign foreign uh, decisions. Yeah, never every, everything he's done has been bad. And you know the thing is too is you got to wonder what the Severance Golden Parachute is right now for him and Jill and Hunter and the rest of them. Could I'd you, like to read that one because I'm telling you, it involves a pardon or two, oh, and think? it involves hundreds, if not billions, of dollars. Right. Interesting. That's yep. what that's what's been d- being negotiated over the last few days. I totally, totally agree. I totally, totally agree because <laughs> that man is not going to walk away because it, it's just it's so insane what's going on. Um, I think now who's gonna who's gonna take his place? Well, we were just talking about that. To me, I, I predicted this over two years ago. I said this was gonna happen over two years ago, and I made another prediction too. Okay, I'm writing this down. Michelle Obama is gonna step up to the plate. She's gonna be the final boss, huh? This is what's gonna happen. They're gonna go to a they're gonna go to an open convention right now in Chicago, and they're gonna burn that place down. And I mean, when I say burn that down, it's gonna make 1968 look like a, 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 a like a party game fair. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, so um, so, and by the end, when the chaos ends, maybe Kamala stays on the ticket. I don't know, but I think we're gonna have something with directly lines to the Obama camp, which is. The, as direct as you can get as the wife, right? And uh, and uh, something clean where they can come in and say, "Oh, it's all new now. It's all good. Vote for us. We've we've messed. We've, we we clean this whole thing up." Right. After they've done a coup, coup d'état mm-hmm. of essentially their elected primary winner and basically forced him out of office. But I don't think she will be. I mean, yeah, she'll be the president, but she'll be the president just like. Uh, Biden's your president. She oh. won't make any decisions. Who, who, who do you think's been running this whole That's show? That's what I'm saying. Who do you think's been running this whole show from day one? So it's not going to be difficult. And they, even though she keeps saying, "Oh no, 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 no," I'm not. No, no, no. I don't want to be president. But well, you you know, I predicted this would happen two years ago. I can't guarantee you that no. that, that Michelle is going to step into this thing or not. But I will guarantee you this. That whatever it is, it'll be controlled by Obama and the rest of these billionaires and, 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 and you know, the George Soros is the mm-hmm, world. Mm-hmm. And they'll make sure that they've got... Now, maybe they've got that kind of control over Kamala, but I'm telling you right now, the woman is brain dead. I mean, she is, she's been bad since she's been here in, right. in, in, in California. She's proven it time and time again. Oh, yeah. And whether they're going to make that the useful stooge at the top or not, maybe she's made a deal with them. I don't know. Or maybe she can make a deal with them. I yeah. don't know. But I'm telling you right now. The th- the thing that's coming from behind, yeah, I believe is coming oh, from Obama. I totally yeah, I agree. I, yeah. I agree with that one thousand percent. All right, let's take a quick break. When we come back. There's a whole lot more right here on Yak Radio with Dave Stahl on FM ninety six one AM eleven seventy. The answer. Hey folks, welcome back to Yak Radio with Dave Stahl, FM 961 AM 1170. The answer. We got Scott McEwen in the house, and we got Jared Basso. He is uh, speed again? What else? Racer? <laughs> what the hell is your name? Jared the Jet. Jared the Jet. Got to get a t-shirt. Yeah, I know. I got to put, put it on my forehead. Jared the Jet. We got to work yep. on that. Hello again. San Diego. Scott, if you don't know Scott McEwen, he's a local San Diegan. 
Uh, he's been he's got ten books out there. Just go scottmcewen.com. It'll give you a list of all the books. Every one of them is going to be an, an amazing read. Uh, how many pages, roughly, per book? Uh, somewhere between three and four hundred. Okay, I could do that. Yeah. I hate these fifteen hundred pages. They have big. They have the ones with the big writing too. Oh, I <laughs> like that. <laughs> Good. Did you see that book by what Roger Stone? Yeah. yeah. Dude, do you know how long that took me to read that? Oh, I know. And I gave it to I gave it to to Joe Bon Giovanni six months ago, and I still haven't got it back. Well, there you go. Dude, Never give them away. Too much. Well, no, I've got my sticker <laughs> in it. I know. I saw it holding the door open to the bathroom at the restaurant. That's probably right. Yeah. Well, I think there's just too many pages for that book. Yeah. How do you take a story like that and 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 condense it into three and four hundred words? No kidding. Isn't that difficult? Yeah. You know, one of the I used to love the critics because I would get critical responses, mm-hmm. you know, all the time. One time, a Huff Post, an AOL one, said, you know, she comes in, she's like, "Yeah, hear another war story from you right wing guys." This and that. And I looked at her and I said, "I said, did you read it? You know, I'm just asking, did you read it? Did you read the book? Could you tell me something about the book?" Well, no. As a matter of fact, I didn't. I said, "Well, how do you critique a book that you haven't read? You haven't read, you know?" Well, you that know, sounds like a thing. Trump hater, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wow. said, "I said, you know, I'll take, I'll take a shot, you know, from somebody." And she comes back, and uh, and she comes back, and she's like, "Well, first of all, I'm not sure if this book is." pro-war or anti-war i said well then you read it i said you know i said and then sec- she said and second of all it's like somebody came up and put a mic on the on the bar opened up a beer and about 20 beers later you guys were done with it with the interview and i said now you got it you got the exactly what happened you paid about your bodies i like that <laughs> well you know it's funny i bring that up about reading a book i don't know if you know a gentleman by the name of jim wangers he was the godfather of the pontiac gto lived in the oh, yeah, yeah, north I've heard county the name now. Just an articulate man. He could sit there like you, and I could just not say a word. And he just goes on and on and on and on. So I got his book, and I read the first twenty pages. You know, I'd never interviewed anybody off of a book. Okay, right. I go, how hard could this be? You know, I'm Mister Adlib anyway. Right. Biggest mistake I ever made in my whole life. <laughs> Biggest mistake. So, so from that day forward, I never did it again. Right. I make sure I read that book cover to cover. But just to blow on myself here, just a little bit. He sent me a letter, and he says, out of all the interviews I've ever done, yours was the best I've ever done. And That's cool. And signed it. And I I was blown away, but I didn't know what he was talking about. So I called him up. I go, Jim, I appreciate it. It's hanging on the wall right now, but I don't understand it. He says, you let me talk. Yeah. You let me tell my story. You didn't interrupt. You didn't walk on me. You let me talk until we went to break. And I've tried to be that way. You know, I, that's why I'm trying to instill No, no, in this, this is a way to do it. it. You know, the personality, obviously, the personality that you bring to the show is why the people listen to your show mm-hmm. or watch your show or whatever right. else. But the real personality that you want to bring during that show is whatever guest you're bringing in. Yeah. You know, to, mm-hmm. to bring a little bit of that life to your, to your readers or your, or your listeners or whoever else. And that's the way I like to write as well. It's not about me. I'm a merely a scribe right. at the Battle of Carthage. It is mm-hmm. about describing the thoughts, the feelings, the, the, the beliefs, the moves of the man that is, uh, in Chris Kyle's case, and a legend. You're right. A about. legend. Yeah, you know it's I mean? not like, about Scott. Yeah. No. no. I mean, you got you to you basically put that person in front of the audience and for good or bad you know you, you gotta because they will admit that they're, nobody is perfect and there was days when they had bad days you know and so but it's that combination of things where you tro- the, show the true personality of the person that I believe makes for good writing right exactly absolutely mm. now I heard something about you going to London at an early stage yeah. in your life what yeah, was, yeah. What, I, what, I, you I went to there? London my family owns land in Ireland in, in Northern Ireland. And that's a, that's w- a bucket list of mine. Yeah, and uh, well, come on up to my place. Anyway, so, uh, um, you know, I inherited from my granddad who was born on the property. And so wow. I got a job in London for a member of parliament and worked in London for a number of years. Actually got to watch Margaret Thatcher in front of the House of Commons oh. on multiple occasions. Oh, on, that'd be on the one pa- I'd pick. Parliamentary Question Day. Amazing lady. The wow. Iron Lady. I mean, oh, yeah. like that, that really affected me. Affected me, her belief in, in democracy in right. Great Britain and in the United States. She was a big believer. And Reagan was in at the same time. What a great combo. Wow. They, they, they brought back the world from a, the brink with the Russians and never fired a shot. I know. Against the USSR. They basically collapsed the entire country. And it was a very tense time, but I used to love to watch that. And, I, you know, and London was a very formatory time for me 
in my understanding of East and West and communism and, 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 and what we really represent to the rest of the world in America. And I think we've lost that because when, when America is weak, the world bleeds. And mm-hmm. that's exactly what we've been seeing during this Biden, Biden era. I'm telling you right now, mm-hmm. when, we wipe, when we carry the stick and we use the stick effectively and judiciously, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it helps the whole world. Right. You may not like the message, but you, you're going to love the results. But, I was telling my wife this morning at breakfast, I said, I just don't understand all these people that are for Biden, how they're living their lives with gas prices and food prices and all these people coming across the border. And I mean, I just don't understand how they could say that he's done a phenomenal job and I want to vote him in again. And it's such a stark change time wise. I have never in my life seen such a black and white change in four in three years. Dave, I mean, it was like one day you woke up and the whole world went to hell in a handbasket. I know. know. And the border got opened and you got 12 million people coming in. You got crime going up. You got gas doubling. Mm. You know, you've got all these bad yeah. things. You food prices doubling, mm. rents doubling, all these things going to hell in a handbasket. And the left is okay with it. And, and they're okay with it. They're like, that's all good. You know, but this is a real telling time. This is the real telling time for America. Either we stand, and people say this all the time, but I'm telling you right now. Either we stand or we fall in this upcoming election. That's and, right. And, and yep. I mean, we are at the edge of the republic that Benjamin Franklin gave to us and said, here's a republic if you can keep it. Yeah. You know, and, and it, we really are there. And it's that important yeah. that America wake up. And I'm not just talking about the people possibly. I, I'm, I'm conservative. I'm, 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 right. I'm, you know, I'm very much a conservative kind of guy. So, Same here. But whatever. But I'm telling you right now, those people that are not sure out there, trust me. We need some conservative values to come back to this country, or we're not going to make it. Exactly. Well, and they say the Supreme Court's not. Well, there's been an awful lot of 9-0. I mean, there's been votes from both sides of their aisle that all they, they look at the Constitution and they make constitutional decisions. So you don't need to change the, the Supreme Court. Hell no. You don't need to pack it. You don't need to get term limits. I you think, don't need to do a coup d'etat right before your Democratic convention. No. You don't. You don't need to do that. No. You know, you could actually follow what we've done for the last two hundred and thirty years, and probably have a pretty darn good country. Because you know what, we've created more more democracy. We've created more democracies on the face of this planet. More wealth, more good things, and right. more values. I believe in any other country in the history of the world, without a shadow of a doubt. And we've got to get back to voter ID. We got to get back exactly. to you know. We got to get back to because. You don't have any, you don't have any joy in voting right now because you don't know if it's going to get counted, and you don't know how many votes are going to come in that are not counted and they're illegal. You know, to, you know, to vote, you talk to anybody that comes to the United States legally. That's one of the the gold the gold ideas of, of being an American. You get to vote. And paper and your vote ballots. Counts. Paper ballots too is a big thing that Trump talks about. Right. I think that's a big thing because that big shutdown we had the other day from mm-hmm. crowd strike, right? Oh, yeah. Everything went down. Well, crowd strikes in the election machines. Sure. Like it's it, they have right. something to do with the votes. And ever since I saw an election machine, I was like, well, that's going to be fraud. Yeah. Well, it's so funny. I was listening to Fox and driving around, and they were talking about the the debacle. <laughs> so they went to break. And it was a crowd strike commercial. So, <laughs> and they were pub. Oh well, we're here. We're going to do that. Just ridiculous. <laughs> well, I'm Hands hopeful. Up. I'm hopeful that people are finally realizing and can and can analyze, and not from a political one R D whatever side yeah. that they can look at this and say, you know, is this going to continue mm-hmm. under the current course? Because I'll guarantee you, if they pull this off and the Democrats get away with it and they retake the White House, and God forbid, the Senate or the House too, mm-hmm. I'm telling you right now. We're in trouble. They have gotten away with you know, what I consider to be a coup d'etat. Mm-hmm. And, and really, the left will have taken so much of this Constitution and shredded it. Yeah. No, without a shadow of a doubt. I, I totally agree. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know how many people believe that. But they should. They better. They better. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting back saying, darn, I wish we'd have done this. Or darn, I wish we'd have done that. The only thing I can say as a bright light is that at least the conservatives realize what's happened in the last three and a half years. I think they're working harder now uh, to make it 
you know, to not allow that debacle to happen, you know, in October. Uh, I love that one speech where, I don't know if you heard it, but it was uh, over the weekend, and Trump says, Holman, get ready. Because <laughs> that guy, Tom Holman, who is in charge of, of uh, uh, immigration and, and the Border Patrol, I mean, I love that guy. I mean, he is a bull in a china closet, and he's got the right right. Well, mentality. you know what? Somebody said something the other day. It's no longer time for us to wake up the sheep. It's time to wake up the lions. Yeah. Without a shadow we got to step up. We got to step up. We got to be willing to put it on the line and say this is the way it is. And I don't care who criticizes me or who says what to me anymore. It doesn't matter. Yep. Mm-hmm. No, not in the least. What matters is a success of the United States of America. Exactly. Corny, corny is for my sounds. kids. Yeah, I, I've lived five great lives. I literally have lived five yeah, great lives. Me both. I mean, you know, and you know what? I'm not doing it for me anymore. I'm not. Yeah. I want my kids to live the same life right. that I lived in. Yeah. I mean, I would. You know, other than the fact. I would love to go back when I grew up. Oh hell! Are you kidding? We had the best, the best of the best of the best. I bet. Yeah, you know, I just had a show on before you guys called Rad, the Rad Movement, where all of the the TV stations won't cover this. Where she goes and finds. I listened in, and, and the and the TV stations won't touch it. Newspapers won't hell touch no. it. They fight her tooth and nail. There's a ranch out in Texas. It's only got, they can only take 250 kids. And she gets calls every day from CPS. You got to help this kid out. You got to get him into the ranch. Why don't we have a ranch here? Why don't we have a ranch in Nevada? Why don't we have a ranch in Col- It's just, and there's enough money out there being thrown around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, no. I, yeah. I don't know. It makes me crazy. 100%, Dave. All right. All right. Well, hey, I'm glad you got some new books coming out. Yeah, everything's coming out. You know, I mean, I got a new one in the Sniper Elite series coming out and some other stuff. And like I said, there's a couple movies in the, now, in the way. In the Sniper Elite series, is are they consecutive? I mean, if you, you like you could read one, two, three, four. Yes, they are consecutive, and the main character is Gil Shannon. He's a Navy SEAL sniper. Okay, and uh, and uh, you know, and he's uh, he's basically a patriot that goes through a series of things. And I used to co- like to call it faction. I I listen to stories and have drinks with men that can never tell these stories. Let's just say through DOJ or uh, or DOD approval. So these are not fiction fiction, books. Th- these are fictionalized situations oh, okay. that take place based upon very real real action and re- very real things that have happened. Brilliant. Different countries. Different names, different environments, so they can never be traced back or 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 compromising. Yeah, any, yeah, well, of, any, course. Any man, of course. Any men in the field. I got a question for you. Going well, back we're, to we're going to do that in the next break. Okay, you got it. But I will tell you, the only reason I'm upset with you right now is I'll probably never go back to cars. <laughs> My last book I'm reading is a history of motocross, <laughs> and now I got to read the whole series. He's got ten books. I total. got ten books to read. Uh, there you go. There I you think go. I'll donate my car and motorcycle books to some car shows because I can't get back. I mean, I, I just can't get back. This is Yak Radio, Dave Stahl, FM ninety six one AM eleven seventy. The answer. Welcome back to Yak Radio FM 961-1170. The answer. You know, I should have made this a two-hour show. I know. I know. Two and a half, three. But, hey, what was I going to do? This segment is brought to you by San Diego Gear and Axle. If you got any kind of undercarriage issues, you can't beat San Diego Gear and Axle. Go to sdgearaxle.com, sdgearaxle.com, and John's Automotive Import Repair in La Mesa, 7447 University Avenue. Go to John's with an S, San Diego Auto Repair, Nap Auto Care, ASC certified, triple A approved. All right, ask your question, and then we're going to talk a little bit about a weekend at Bernie's. Okay, sounds good. Uh, real quick, I did want to remind everybody that Scott's uh, book turned movie won an Academy Award. Oh. And uh, I had a quick question, Scott, on the Punisher logo that appears in the movie on the on the Hummers quite a bit because that Punisher logo has made a emergence in certain circles with trump's fan base mm. since he he started running and i was curious if you could tell us anything behind that yeah symbolism. the punisher logo was something they did at seal team three charlie which was cadillac whatever chris's uh, division and 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 guys he deploys with deployed with in iraq and uh they just brought it because essentially the 
opposition was doing terrorist moves, almost like gang-like moves within Iraq where they were operating. So when they were brought in to take care of whatever the bad guys were, they would put the logo on and paint it on the area and paint it on their gear and basically say, you, you were chosen to, to receive the wrath of us. And if you do it again, we're coming back. And wow. it was, it's almost like it's a weird thing because you're dealing with Medinas and small towns and yeah. Ambar province and stuff like that. And so basically they were saying, look, you, you know, we're, we're coming back if yeah. it doesn't happen and so it's almost like a tagging thing it's, awesome. it's, it's weird as it awesome. sounds and then ultimately Marvel gave that logo to or I should say licensed that logo to um, the movie and to the gear wow. Wow. I didn't think about that that's, yep. that's rad yeah yep. alright so the, the, the gorilla in the room the, the, the assassination attempt on Donald J. Trump what's your feelings on that okay you know and, and, and I want to start this by saying Dan Bongino was interviewed by Russell Russell the other day, Bran, and I thought it was a very good statement Dan made because he's a former Secret Service agent. Right. He's extremely upset, and I, I know Dan personally, and, sure. uh, and I totally respect him. And uh, he said, look, I'm not going to go into the world of what I don't know. I'm going to stick with what I do know for now, and I know that the research and what actually happened is going on. But things are not explained even closely to what the reality is as we currently speak. Now, the question is, how quickly will we get that reality and how quickly will the truth come out? But we do know this. At best, at best, this is the most incompetent DEI crap show, and I didn't use the other word mm -hmm. because we we're on that. radio, um, that, that we have ever witnessed from any agency of the United States, let alone the Secret Service protecting the former president and likely to be the next president mm -hmm. of the United States. Absolute, complete, 100% incompetence. At best, mm -hmm. now, if you go to the other end of that spectrum, at worst, we have something that's operating that is even more sinister. I don't know what to say, but you and I both listened to that, that uh, audio of mm -hmm. those guns. The guns that were supposedly used in this operation are not being explained as we speak. In other right. words, there's something going on out there that does not provide an explanation for the eight shots followed by the kill shot, which probably did come from the Secret Service detail, mm -hmm. you know, which it was a, at 130 yards. I make that shot blind, drunk, and right. with my eyes closed. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, so you, you know, like, like, come on, man. 130 yards, you got a shooter inside that perimeter with, with, with a high-powered weapon, and, you, and you're not able to cover that? I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and so, number one, we have a complete breach of security mm -hmm. inside the president's detail. Yeah. And it must be rectified immediately. Um, I have been concerned for some time and actually sent resources to Robert Kennedy Jr., I don't back Robert Kennedy Jr. per se politically. What I do back is the fact that his dad was killed for this country, as well as his uncle. And, and they have refused to give him Secret Service protection. This is the son of RFK that was killed for this country, and his yep. father is John F. Kennedy. You know, what and so like, is up with that? Because they want him dead. I mean, I have no other conclusion oh, that I, I can draw. You know, mm -hmm. that, that, you know because if they Hunter... Want us all dead. If Hunter get Secret Service protection, which he probably has three agents assigned to him specifically. Mm -hmm. You know, why can't we give something to RFK Jr., mm -hmm. who this country owes a debt of service to? Absolutely. You know, at the end of the day, you know, whether I agree with him politically or not, the man deserves protection, and so does his family. Mm -hmm. Now, let's just say I sent some resources in his direction, and, and what he did with those resources as far as men that I know that can be trusted. I think right now, right now, and I've sent this message through channels that used to be with SEAL Team 6 as well, that Donald Trump, Donald J. Trump should hire his own specific security detail yep. to direct. I'm not saying the Secret Service can't do canvassing, can't go out, mm -hmm. can't be manpower there. To direct the right actions to protect his life. Totally. I think I anything else would be totally irresponsible. And if, if he wanted the money for it, I'd be willing to chip in. Mm -hmm. And I'll guarantee you there's millions of other Americans who would be in the Absolutely. same position. Absolutely. Without a shadow of a doubt. That's what should be done right now. Right now. You know, because I'm telling you, I don't trust them. I don't trust the competence of this DEI agency. I don't trust these little, these whatever, these, okay, women pulling out guns that are five foot three and that are trying to protect a man that's six foot three at a podium and you're supposed to put your body around him. Right. You know, that's what you're supposed to do. And you're five foot three trying to jump. You can't do it. And you're not really in shape to jump. And you can't <laughs> even, and you can't even get your gun back in your holster. No, no, I'm telling you, this is, this is pathetic. It's, it's absolutely pathetic. And you know, and the, America should be shocked. And, and, and saddened and pissed off. So, do you think the uh, Secret Service, head of Secret Service, will appear Monday? And I what will, will you hear? I, I, I bet no, especially given the political climate that we're in right now. Yeah. I mean, it, Mayorkas could give a whatever. Yeah. 
Patoot's backside about about what 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 Congress thinks of him. They they already tried to impeach him. Oh yeah, I mean, like they you know, Americus is ultimately in charge as That's Homeland Security correct, of correct. the Secret Service. So right. do I? Would I bet that Mayorkas is? Democratic lawyers would tell her to show up under this political, you know, thing that's going on right now. Hell no. They're yeah. going to go. They're going to hold her in contempt. She will ultimately probably appear. But behind or, or, or closed design, doors, behind closed doors, right. whatever else. But the bottom line is, are they going to allow her to publicly appear right now? I would be shocked. I would be totally shocked. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Jared? I think that. Uh, did you guys see Trump's rally? Was it yesterday? He did a rally a week after right, right. this happened. Right. And he must have did something because. They were confident to put him out there. It was in a building, but the roar of the crowd, I know this isn't right on with what you guys were talking about, but it was incredible. Oh, like, well, I mean, what this whole thing has done to this movement, uh, there's so many levels to it. Yeah. Well, I think there's, it's, first they tried this, that didn't get him out. Then they tried it, that didn't get him out. And this was inevitable. Yeah. I mean, it was predicted. It was predicted. I mean, like, you know, the guys that were out there, the shot's going to be taken. You know, like, the, the question is where it's coming from and how many people are shooting. Yeah. You know, you know but, uh, you know, but, you know it was, it, everybody knew that they had to get him out this way or, or try to or try to. And, you know, and I think, you know, and I'm not a real religious man. But I have to believe that you somebody whispered at the air I've and seen said, so- you know what, I'm going to move that bullet. One centimeter, yeah. one centimeter That's away it. from his brain, That's and it. make him turn to the right. I, uh, I'm, I, I, I'm on the same page with you, yeah. and I, and I'll tell you how eerie it was. I was watching that round. I was too, and and I just started to get a, a just a real weird feeling before the shot was fired. I, I just really was. I'm going to be dead honest with you. Not a premonition. I don't know what it was, but I just was not. And bang, it happened. Whoa. But I think. You know, by the grace of God. And did it change him? Yeah, I think it changed him. Well, I think he realizes his place in history now. I do, too. And, and I think he's got a destiny. And, and I don't think it's one where he looks at it personally like, you know, like, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. I think he looks at it like, I have a responsibility now to reunite this country. Right. Clean this crap up. Right. Get this back on the right thing. And hopefully give my kids and my grad kids something for the future. I know. And, you know, I, and, I, 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 and I know the man. I know the man. I know his son. Yeah. I've met him. You know, like, you know. I mean, a guy that wrote a book with Ryan Zinke was his secretary of the interior. Yeah, come on. So, like, you know, and, and so, you know, like, I, I, I know the people that are his counselors. Too. Come on, flip your phone out. Yeah, get yeah. him to call in. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, yeah, so we got some more time. I've, I've, got, I've got Clint Eastwood and Bradley Cooper's number in there, too. <laughs> well, let's do that, too. Uh, Bradley did such an amazing job in that movie. You're kidding me. I know. Well, I tell you what, I know, I know you're, you're, you're sort of a humble guy, but I think you have done so much for the country in your writings and your books and your storytelling. And I think you're going to go down in history as probably one of the best storytellers because your stories, and I haven't read the book, but I did see the movie. And if the movie is anything like the, the book, I'm really going to be stoked because we need people like you. We need people that are not afraid to tell the truth, that are not afraid to to give the information. And I just got a text from somebody says, how come that's not a two-hour show? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Because I'm going to try to save Oceana Dunes in the next hour, you know, with a good buddy of mine, because that's another. Talk about a book. Government's trying to shut down no. Oceana Dunes, and it's just <sighs> crazy. Well, you know what? I like to think that I'm one of the messengers, and I try to instill in other people the, the guts and the wherewithal to get up and say, you know what? That's wrong. I'm not going to buy it. And I'm here to tell you the United States isn't going to buy it. That's and right. That's how we got to move the next generation forward. Yeah, Scott. God bless you, folks. Thank you, Scott. Chat. Find him on Amazon. Scott McEwen. You can't miss it. Start reading the books. I'm going to start number one out of out of all ten. All right, Jared. Thanks for coming in. I thought you'd appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely loved it, Dave. Thanks right. a lot, Scott, coming in. I mean, you're in San Diego, so yeah. we hey. come back. Oh, I'll leave I, I'd love to come down. He, I, I enjoy see, this. I enjoy he this. wasn't yeah. going to come in. He was just going to call in. <laughs> I knew I'd hook him. I enjoy this. You know why? It's yeah. the water. Uh, all right, FM ninety six one AM eleven seventy. The answer. <laughs>